Thank you very much. Let's get down to business. Welcome to tonight's meeting of the Bingley Town Council, a meeting where both the chair and the deputy chair are both um, absent, and that's why I'm sitting in this seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um, the only comment, I, I mean, I've been away for a couple of weeks, but the only comment I would make in the chair's remarks is that I observed um, the uh, social media um, reports about the uh, meeting with the community groups, which looked as if it was quite oh, yeah, well attended, so I think we should, we should note that was a um, successful yeah. event. Yeah. Right, let's move on to apologies for absence. To note apologies for absence, the book has gone around. Um, do we take this collectively? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, the, well, apologies for well, 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 Okay, just so we all know. Councillor Carney, Councillor Gibbons, Councillor Truelove, Councillor Williams and Councillor Shaw. Um, so Councillor Hesseltine has proposed we accept the reasons Councillor Goods and, and though all in favour please show, so those are um, noted. Um, disclosures of interest to receive declarations of interest from Council's items on the agenda. Anybody want to make any um, declarations? Okay, to receive written requests for dispensations. I don't think we've received any of those, so we don't have to grant them. Right, minutes of the previous meeting, which was held on the 29th of August, and those are attached. Um, can we take them as a second sure. Proposed by Councillor, uh, seconded by Councillor Good, and should we say, can those show? Those in favour? I'll abstain. Yeah, I'll abstain. Okay. So, two abstentions. So, those are agreed. Confidential items to be discussed in Confidence Act after um, item 23, 24, 1, 2, 6. Um, already we've got um, some of the items about staffing matters um, and the, um, uh, the pub electrical work. Um, is there anything else on the agenda which needs to? Um, go into the confidential section. No, so we will um, leave that as, as they are. Um, we were hoping in um, 23, 24, 110 to have a representation from the Bradford Youth Service. Um, and I know they were invited, um, but unless Michelle's doing that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think we'll have to um, defer it, okay? Because um, the, did the youth service um, respond? They did respond. They did respond saying that they were hoping to make this meeting, but the main lady that I've been on, <coughs> she couldn't okay. make it. She was going to try to get another colleagues to come, so she clearly didn't. Okay. So we can defer that and ask and see if we can rearrange that session. Um, 23, 24, 111, public participation. Um, members of the public um, have this opportunity to speak at the meeting on any topic relevant to the work of the council. However, they may not speak during the rest of the meeting unless invited by the <coughs> um, Michelle, you're a member of the public as well. Is there anything you want to raise? No. Apart? No. Okay. Thank you. So we're really motoring now. Okay. Um, <laughs> 23, 24, 112. Um, I think we were expecting, were we not, a representation from um, the ward councillors. They said at the last meeting one of them would be here at every meeting. Quote, yeah. quote. So, again, well, I know at least one of the ward councillors is away at the moment, but there are three of them. Okay, well, we can only know they did. Is this the first time this has been on the agenda? Yes, yeah. and, and it was on the agenda as far as I know because at the last meeting 
when the two of the councillors came, they said they wanted to um, have greater interaction. And yeah. they, they said that they would ensure that somebody attended each of the meetings. Oh, they a phone through phone. Yeah, and that's why <coughs> we didn't just put this on without no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I'll put the Okay, I, I, actually, I funny if I saw um, one of them today, and I don't know one of them was at the meeting today, but um, not all of them. Right, a little leave with that. Um, 20, now, 23 24, being the Chamber of Trade grant application, I'm delighted that Michelle Chapman, of course, a former member of this body, um, is, is here. Um, Clearly, the, the papers have been um, circulated. I think there was some discussion when I was away at our finance meeting, and I think there was some further information um, that's been requested. So, um, so most of the council, apart from those on the finance committee, won't, and um, you know, the receiving documentation but won't know much about it. So, um, perhaps if you want to at least initially give a bit of a, an intro to, to what's proposed. Well, sure. I mean, obviously, Jane has asked me to attend here because I think there were some um, people that perhaps didn't agree or had further questions to ask. So I think Jane has supplied the information that's required on the back of the grant application. Um, so I'm here to ask any questions. I think there were some questions with regards to um, the pulses requirement to be on site. Um, Pulse advertised for us three weeks up to the event and attract the crowds, do, do the light switch on and they're a really integral part of, of the event. Without all the advertising we wouldn't have the football that we have for sure. Um, so that covers the pulse. Um, the grotto, we've now decided as of last year and I think the year before, um, to go through a company coming in to do that, mainly because the amount of people that help with the Christmas light switch on now is probably down to four of us. So the grotto used to be built, as you know, inside um, the old butter crosser, and it used to entail in, in people getting up at four o'clock in the morning, building a grotto for the children. It's just not sustainable. We haven't got the people, the volunteers, to be able to do that. So the, um, the blow-up grotto, if you like, is a much easier option. It was managed fantastically last year, and we had some really good feedback for it. The rides obviously are the rides, that, that's the price that the rides are. I think Bingley is renowned for putting on a free event, which is unlike all the other areas. I noticed on social media last year, people complaining about the cost of the rides for the families and that they couldn't afford it. And we've always taken great pride that we can put this event on and allow um, families that are perhaps underprivileged to be able to bring the children out and, and have a day that, that doesn't cost them an absolute fortune. So that's why the rides at that. I think there was some question as well, sorry I wasn't at the meeting, but um, with regards to rides for older ages, yeah. the, the light switch on is basically for young families, if you like, the children that still believe in Santa Claus, that's why they come to the grotto. Um, we have a very limited space out up, outside the art centre of the Market Square. The Market Square is full of stalls. The lower level, we have very limited space. Um, if I'm being totally honest, if we were to put on such as waltzes or something like that for the teenage crowd, we don't have anybody to man that. We, it, just me and Jamie walking around and a couple of other people in high vis. Um, I certainly don't want added pressures of loads of groups of teenagers turning up free rides and we just haven't got that space to do that so it's not that we're discriminating against anyone the event is for and aimed at um, younger families that obviously where the children like I say still believe in Santa Claus so if Bingley Town Council wanted to go down that route we do have the sidecar park at the Arts Centre they could arrange that themselves but it'd have to be manned and security required or whatever so that that's the reason that we've never done that in previous years and definitely no, not interruption the good lady move more central yes yeah, sure. uh, so that's with regards to the rides uh, the dj is the dj price so pulse don't turn up till late afternoon um, so we do have a DJ that starts from 10 o'clock onwards and he does children's games and, and gets the interaction in the square. Uh, presents, we give out presents for every child that comes to see Santa. That costs just short of £1,000 in presents to give away free. Uh, we don't charge for the grotto. Everything is, is you know, free of charge. 
We have the donkeys, which are £350, the art centre, higher, which is £700. We like to support the art centre, we like to use that. We have a good indoor uh, craft fair there, which I'm sure some of you will have been to. And the marketing, which of course is all the banners, the leaflets and everything else that goes with it. Um, so I'm, I'm sat here saying, please support this event. If you don't, it won't happen because the chamber doesn't have the money. And, 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 and basically the formats can be the same as it's been in, in Yeah, absolutely. Years. That's what yeah. the public yeah. want. Um, that's, that's what they're used to. We've been doing this event for years and it grows and it grows every year. You know, there's hundreds and hundreds of people come to this event. So, um, yeah, we're just asking for the town council to please support it because we can't fund it anywhere. Well, it's certainly a great community event and it's, I think it's very important that it happens. So now we'll go through questions from councillors. Um, Councillor Clerk, then Councillor Drucker, Councillor Mia, Councillor Good, in that order. Well, there will explain Michelle. Um, Pulse 2457. As the Chamber of Trade, does only pay that amount in previous years? Yes. Yeah. It was probably inflated a little bit. At what time are we getting here then? You said you don't they're, get, they're getting here around probably half past two, three o'clock as the crowd starts to build until when? on the square, till the lights get switched on about half past four. But it's not just for that two hours, that's for the DJ for the two hours, and that's for three weeks of advertising up to mm -hmm. that. It's all the radio airtime, and, and I don't know whether you're a Pulse listener, but trust me, they do give Bingley a lot of focus. So that it's not just that one day, it is the three weeks. I feel it is a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money. Yeah. In my opinion. Good money. And I don't spot that part of the budget. Okay, well, we'll, we'll go through all the questions. That's Councillor fine. Drucker. Um, it's not really a question, I just uh, want to say that I think it's a great event, I think it, it, it's really popular and I think it's something that we should support. Thank you. Yeah. Councillor Mia. Yeah, hello, hi, hi. Michelle. Yeah, yeah it's, it, uh, I agree with Councillor Luca as well. It's a good event. It's a, so I, I presume, you know, in terms of the figures, it's uh, yeah, the Chambers is uh, contributing 50% oh, towards it, so it'd be half of the 8,338 yeah. is So the Chamber is made up of the contributions from Bingley businesses that pay into the Chamber of Trade on an annual subscription. So, be, so it's the whole town that contributes to it. So, so it'd be half of that amount? Yes. You'd be looking for it. Yes. Okay, um, I, I just thought, uh, I did, uh, at the finance meeting I did say I would support support it because I always have supported it. Uh, I didn't think that Pulse were a lot of money for what it was and I think the marketing is a lot of money for for, yeah. uh, for leaflets and, uh, and five banners, a thousand, over a thousand pounds. That's just my comment but... That's fine. Have the Pulse always been involved with the advertising? Yeah. Since it's, for the last, since yeah, it's for the last, yeah, I can't remember how many years. So the posts have never not been involved. Well, can you remember what year they started? Because all I want to know is the simple question: is how do you know how well the pulse does if you haven't got anything to compare it with? When you say it does we've an not, extremely we've not good done job, it year on year, we don't, I mean, how would we measure that? We've not measured footfall back in two thousand or whenever the Christmas light switch on, so that'd be really difficult to measure. Any other comments, questions? Can How many pages? Sorry? Is it a document that's been up that uh, you refer to here? No, no. No, no. sorry, I've got the wrong end of the stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Okay. Any other? Councillor Hazeltine. Yeah, is the chairman of that registered? I'm not sure. I've got a question. Okay. And the. Uh, uh, do recollect seeing uh, somewhere the uh, number of adverts that you get for your two K plus that. Could just remind me, could you? Okay, well, Jamie sent all the information no. in, hasn't he, with regards to how many leaflets are produced, banners, and posters? No, no, no. As Michelle, oh sorry Michael. As a forest, yeah. um, Michelle, thank you for your stepping in there and giving us your information, etc. Um, I've read everything that came through and uh, in, in general I think it was a good idea and splitting the costs of the eight, eight and a half grand sort of thing 
Um, I take your point about um, it's a lot of money for marketing, but marketing is a lot of money these days. And uh, if you don't go with pools, who are you going to go with? Because there isn't going to be anyone else. So if if that gets the people there and they all get the enjoyment out of it, and, that, and it's a regular sort of thing, and people will be looking forward to it, I think that we ought to support it. Yeah. I do think as well that if you've got an events company and to put on an event of that size, what would you pay in wages? Let's face it, this is put on by volunteers and, and three or four of us at that. So, yeah. That's a nice idea. Yeah. Yeah. Do we know the reach of pools across Bingley, what's there? Um, it goes across all BD postcodes, doesn't it? And it yeah, what do they have, not have a split when they do these viewer and listing mm. information? Um, that might have been something usual. It, for a couple of hours and a few adverts on radio, it could sound a lot more. I think this year we need it more than ever because we're up against how the Christmas light switch on the same day, which is a bit of a worry. So, uh, I mean, yeah. Chairman, I don't think we have any option but to, uh, to support this event and pay 50% because things have obviously been booked already. Um, so I will put my hand up and I will propose that the Town Council pays 50% of the cost of the lights on top. Okay. Can, you on that? Okay. Can, can I just clarify, the, the, the event is jointly branded, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so Bingley Town Council are credited to get the credit as well as the email. Yeah, know, yeah. Same yeah. Here on Can I just, uh, 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 it says in the email minutes that John will tell uh, or pass on the message from Councillor Carney yes. that she is interested in Participating along she's with the, she, she's, yes, well, she said she's said so in the past, and I've I've done what I said I'd do. So okay, uh, yeah, we've got a little missive from uh, Councillor Gibbons and Councillor Wales this evening. She did ask that um, an element of uh, uh, what she wanted to say was uh, brought to the meeting. Um, the pulse element. Is it actually value for money? Maybe not. And you know, to look at maybe not contributing that thousand quid's worth of that element. <coughs> That's. I'm only reading out what. No, I'm, I'm not arguing that. I'm just, I, I would say that looking at the financial situation of the chamber, that if you give them a thousand less. They'll be struggling to pay half of next year. <laughs> That's the whole thing. If I, if I just yeah, follow on to that, obviously, this is fairly late in the day. Yeah. If the council was minded to go with the proposal, Pardon? if the council was minded to go with the proposal, I think in future years we maybe need to interrogate the pulse element of it um, and if we've got a DJ for the best part of the day what additional cost would there be for another DJ uh, to, to do that last three hours as a bit of a change and do the turn on thing uh, that's a suggestion from myself if the town council minded this time Okay, well, Councillor Good has made a proposal that the, um, the council pay 50% of the costs, of the total costs, as was in the grant application. And those in favour of that, please show. And those against? Okay, it is carried. Thank you. So, um, but, but I, I suppose only I, I, I would just comment 
you know, as, you know, along the lines of Councillor Hesseltine, that because obviously there's some, some issues have been raised about the cost, particularly the pulse element, yeah. I think that next year we at least need to perhaps look Just a bit further. Just some more volunteers than what we next year anyway, yeah. so, no, but thank you, I'll pass that on to Jamie, obviously, and I'll see you next. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You may go. Thank you. Twenty-three, twenty-four. Ongoing items. Bingley Pool. Um, Council Carl is not here. I don't think there's been any further developments on on that. Um, we're still waiting. Last time I heard, we're waiting for the council, the Bradford Council, to decide whether or not um, that they were going to they're going to mark the test. Um, the, the the site of the pool in the old town hall to see what market interest there is um, to decide whether or not you know um, you know some, they could get some private um, investment in the site. It it seems to have all gone quiet on that front at the moment. Um, unless anyone else knows anything anything more than that. Um, item B: the long running issue of the speed indicator devices. <coughs> Is there any further news? Um, as far as we're aware, we're still waiting for Bradford Council to finalise their policy, aren't we? That's it. Yeah. So, so have the council changed their policy? No, they're, they're, in, they're in the process of change. Right. Uh, I'm considering whether we're going to change it or not, I understand. Is that right? I think so, yeah. yeah. Well, I think also, um, Eve, at the last week, sorry, Jay, yeah, we said that we were going to write to either the chief executive or somebody on, on that line because of the delay, yeah. Yeah. you know, with this process. I don't know if that... No, we didn't in the end because Philippa yeah. brings it up at what partnership meetings. So she was going to see what comes out of that, uh, that uh, partnership. And I think that we also um, suggested, um, off asked whether Councillor Frick could um, make inquiries as well. And mm -hmm. I think she said that she would suggest for some um, yeah. further information. Yeah, this uh, Ashraf, uh, um, to some extent, myself, have done a lot of work on trying to get this one passed. Um, I think there will be a need to review the costings because I am sure in the three or four years we've been at it, these things won't have gone down in price. Yeah. Uh, and I think we need to put um, uh, a market out of Bradford Council, the other get a workable policy within a certain length of time, yeah. else we shelve the project. Yeah. Which yeah. is so frustrating because it is. Um, this has been, yeah. Yeah. for all this is what we've had for years. And on the face of it, it should be something fairly straightforward, yeah. Yeah. since we're paying. Mm. <laughs> I still think exactly. 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 We asked them to review the costs mm. Mm. and sort the policy out in a timely manner. 16. Other than that, then you <coughs> have to withdraw from that particular uh, endeavour. That's mm. So um, I'll second that. Who is answering to that? That would be Craig Williams, yeah. wouldn't it? Well, it would be probably his boss, uh, and yeah. Simon Duvall. Yeah. 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 Okay, so Councillor Hesseltine has proposed that I've seconded those in favour of the proposal. Yeah. Everybody is so with so that's an action point. Um, right, moving on to 23-24-115 Finance to receive and approve the schedule of payments. Um, for September, and they have been circulated. Um, has anybody got any particular questions on any any particular lines? So proposed, uh, Okay, so proposed by Councillor Clough, seconded by Councillor Good. Show those in favour. So we will be able to uh, get these. Um, issued as paid as soon as possible. Um, item B to agree the bank reconciliations for August 2023. Obviously, I think these are these are, will have been to the finance committee previously. Um, anybody got any, there's anybody got any questions or issues on those documents? 
proposal. A proposed acceptance by um, Councillor Good, seconded by Councillor Beckwith. Those in favour, and they're agreed. Right, and um, now we come to um, some of the minutes. Um, these are essentially for information, but if anybody wants to bring out any particular issues, um, 2324116, the Events, Marketing and Communications Subcommittee. Um, we note the minutes. Anybody want to um, pull out anything? Yeah, until, until, until things, um, Michael uh, joined the group, um, and myself and uh, Councillor Gibbons and uh, Councillor Carney. Uh, we also um, had an addition of um, Lynn Williams. Uh, we had a, a meeting and uh, which we went on to talk about the uh, one or two events that you can you can see that's that I mean, it did, we, we did have that you mentioned earlier uh, the um, yeah. It's an engagement event. No, they, they, yeah, they, uh, yeah. Networking event. Networking event, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What would I do without you? Um, <laughs> networking, which it really was a, a success. Uh, we had a, a, a lot of people from a lot of groups. Uh, I suppose the thing to, to do now is to get something positive out of it. And what sort of feedback do they give you? Uh, well, basically, there'd be probably 25 to 30 people there, I would say. About 30. About 30. Um, we basically all went down the room. There were various various groups. Um, so we got a, a wide ranging thing that uh, Chris Slaven were there um, from various uh, Big Lynn Mus uh, uh, Music Town. Uh, walkers are welcome. Loads and loads of different groups. Um, all pretty positive, all, pretty positive. Uh, all wanting to communicate and uh, improve Bingley. So I think it's at the, the next meeting we'll have to look into uh, how we can progress that and uh, benefit uh, the wide, widening of our uh, 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 what's it, uh, communications. Yeah, yeah. yeah. okay. Um, uh, Michael, if you want anything to ask, please. Oh, I thought we were a great event, to be honest. You know, I actually woke up in the morning thinking, oh, that there was only two or three there, and it were a bit of a storm. Yeah, there weren't really any, any chairs left, really. So it was it, it a good do. And there were a lot of positive things came out from people. Uh, one of the things that a lot of them seemed to want were volunteers. <laughs> <laughs> and the second thing that everybody seemed to want were a, a market again. You know, they all wanted to get back to having a market, but... Yeah, I think uh, you know supermarkets probably kill that off, but you know there's well, maybe opportunities. Yeah. 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 Well, there's probably it probably opportunity to build on that, but it, it might need uh, more focus and you know to to target in certain such you know stall or holders that are not there that go to other places. Okay, right, so presumably the Events and Marketing Committee will um, actually take into account some of this feedback and decide how it's going to Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. next 23 24 is the Finance and General Purpose Committee, which I wasn't at, I was on, on holiday. Um, I, I, I'm looking through the, the minutes. Um, I note that the we finally amended the um, business plan documentation um, which we've been um, looking at for the last few months. Um, and Clark, is it also all you're proving that? Yes, yeah. please, yeah. So the, the, doc, the business, um, uh, basically it's aimed to try and make the, pro, the process of when we're starting doing projects to um, try and make the process more streamlined and uh, avoid it. We do lots of work when the projects are only at some sort of um, you know, early stage of the process. So, so I think that they're, um, they're, they're an enhancement on what we had before. So I, mean, I would like to propose those are accepted. Um, and can I uh, second. be prepared to second it? And can we say that those are agreed? Yeah. Those in favour? Yes, they are. So, so thank you. So those will become the process we have to follow um, when we start off um, those projects. 
Um, I, I note also um, there was ref in the minutes and the minutes in the agenda. There's reference to um, um, clean and green. Um, oh yes, is yeah. the um, oh, yes is this yeah uh, I have um, Debbie uh, gathered me on and said uh, pre previously in the year I would said that there, there would be one on this thirtieth uh, of September. Um, I just amended that slightly to the seventh. Um, went went to Carrying House, came out with a bit of litter around there. That's what we're doing <laughs> in the next litter pit. So it's uh, yeah, um, and, and uh, there's some things like that there. Yeah. In this and and I note that um, you're investigating still with the admin. Yeah, system. yeah. It's, it's um, just it's, uh, it's, it's just getting it's just getting, it's getting sort of a, yeah. It's just yeah. sort of getting the speaker and and, and somebody yeah. um, to speak with. Um, Generate a bit of interest yeah. to, to allow people to come. We we have we have, we have had, uh, had a well uh, one line of inquiry, but it was far too much money okay. uh, for for a small small event. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So shall we move on to the neighbourhood plan working group now? Council Williams is not with us. He sent a few notes round um, in his absence. Um, does, and does anyone want to say anything in particular about? I think that we're now rapidly approaching a situation where the formal consultation will be able to take place, um, and that's going to involve quite a lot of work in terms of having session drop-in sessions. That councils hopefully will need to be involved in that, and um, documents are going to have to be produced and displays produced. Um, so that's um, you know arguably the most important task of the year, getting this neighbourhood plan moving. But all I would say is I think that um, I thank all those people who've been involved because it's been a very long and arduous process. Um, but I think we're finally getting there, and it will be worth worth in his while when this plan is actually um, um, finally voted upon and become operational. Um, 23 24 119 planning committee, yes. Mr. Clough. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, we had um, we had three members of the public turned up because of the uh, high plane developments. So it was quite a good uh, discussion. They, they they spoke very well of, of their feelings towards this, and we had an internal discussion. And as you see, we had um, we few was there on the ground, I'm going to go through it all. We few was there. And if that the council are minded, um, it's good we believe it wants to go to a planning panel and then we could have another say. But hopefully, it's 70 houses on the side. It's 70 houses, yeah. huge. <laughs> but uh, we felt you know, that uh, it was a no go. Um, and the other one, I suppose, was 9 to 11 and 8 in Park Park Gardens. They have to catch a full off development certificate. We went down a lot of it, didn't we, David? And, uh, yeah, there was uh, basically there's two properties built, uh, a number of other properties not built, and were wanting a lawful certificate uh, to uh, absolve themselves of all the conditions while well, actually the property not even been built yet. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, twenty three twenty four one twenty. The totally local campaign to receive and approve the risk resource assessment support totally locally campaign and to receive the support and to approve support for the campaign. The risk and resource assessment form and further information is attached. It's in the name of Council Gibbons and Council of Goods. Yeah, um, I can't put my hand up for writing a word of that apart okay. from agreeing that I would be uh, a joint uh, member, uh, councillor to propose it. Um, there was a we went to the Chamber of Trade and the chap there uh, flagged this, um, the chap from the uh, Hedgehog, Hedgehog over there. And um, I turned up and Councillor 
uh, Ezra Tyne and Councillor Gibbons were already there. I just went because I'd talked to this guy. And so I have to grab some input from, um, from Councillor Ezra Tyne. I believe that um, the proposal for £500, uh, we say that we will support businesses in Bingley. Um, I think it's a, a small, we haven't even had an application yet. But the proposal is just to spend uh, to um, award up to five hundred pound. How the how the system works is it's like an, a national. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, David. Um, it's a wide ranging organisation, and they provide um, various marketing tools uh, in an electronic form. So if um, the a group such as the group there um, wants to use that, they have to pay for the printing and the uh, that sort of thing for leaflets, posters, banners, whatever to promote it. Um, and that's where we could probably step in and and, uh, and help to. And they're talking about getting the things uh, printed locally as well. Um, I, I think that's it, and so I'd be proposing it, but I'd, I'd yeah, like David to, he was there all the time and, and was seen keen, so... I, I think he sums it up pretty well, John. It's a national campaign, but it was actually started over in Hebden Bridge or Hebden, so one of those hates you know, about Halifax, where uh, it's like a not-for-profit organisation getting stress independent yeah. businesses yeah. so if you're a franchisee of a sandwich shop it doesn't include you unfortunately but i think it goes down along with some of the other campaigns currently out there you know don't pay on your card pay with cash yeah. so five or ten pound thirty pound as it goes around the shops, it's still worth that rather than the big banks taking their cut off it and that spending power reduces all the time, which is something I suggested they ought to try and tie in with yeah. that sort of aspect of it as well. I view it as a start-up grant. Yes. You know, yeah. We had a different hat on. Yeah. Various community groups would come with an idea and we would give them a start-up yeah. grant. That's right. Because a lot of the time you just don't have any money to get going. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them become very successful. Yeah. One or two go by the wayside. Yeah. But I think if this helps local businesses try to get people to actually shop a little bit better, in our local community, yeah. whether you're going to a cafe, coffee shop, sink shop, whatever, um, yeah, I think for a small investment, um, yeah, I'd be quite happy to say, John. Just, uh, just uh, on that, uh, there was a short video and it was outlining that if you spend a tenner in a local um, mm. shop and they use local businesses to yeah. support their business, it becomes uh, a, a, a Ten pound investment can can swell to a sort of fifty pounds. So that that's the theory of it anyway. And it, 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 it seems to me this is a far better approach than that previous approach yeah. about you know, yeah. 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 Yes. This seems a lot and, more and, and, and such and such a lot <coughs> out there. Yeah. 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 So so uh, so so basically what we're doing is we're pro where the mm -hmm. proposal is that we can pay up to five hundred pounds when subject subject to yeah. a grant application. Yeah. Yes. So I propose it David send me. Okay, those in favour of this? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Good everyone. Yeah. And yeah. anyone against no no so that is agreed. Good. Twenty three, twenty four, one two one, play in the park. Um, always a popular uh, part of our offering. What, what's the plan for... Um, just year? get the dates booked in for next year. Yeah. And um, yeah, get them paid, get them booked in. You don't pay till after. Yeah, yeah. Get, get, the, get the kids enjoying the parks and fresh air. Oh. Are you proposing that then? I'm proposing that, yeah. I'll be setting it up. Those in favour? Yeah. I think that's always a really positive mm -hmm. thing the council does. Mm. Um, 23, 24, Town, 1, 2, 2, Town Clerk's Report, receive the Town Clerk's Report, including correspondence received to note, which has been referred to throughout the council. Mm. 
No, to Chad. Any, any issues, questions about the town clerk's report? Mm -hmm. So, shall we note it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, 23-24, some specific um, bits of correspondence which gives us the opportunity to respond on what as we see fit. Um, item A was an email from the council's licensing team regarding some uh, premises variation of the engine room and just next door to this. Um, there was a bit of email interaction amongst the councillors um, on, on this. Does anybody want to make any um, uh, official representation to the licensing committee um, or do we want to um, just leave it? Leave it. So we will offer no comment on that. Okay, um, an email from Bradford Council R is statutory consultation for lowering the age range at Hoyle Court Primary School, which I think is in Belden. Um, it is. Yes. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure anyone's going to have any particular no. comments on that um, issue. Um, so no we'll, comment. No, no comment. No. Um, email from the Bingley Business Expo regarding the event 27th tomorrow. Mm. Um, I think. Councillor Good. Are we going? Yeah, I'm going the um, from lunchtime onwards. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. got a, something in the morning I need to get. Well, I, I am so. Right. Yeah. yeah so me, me and Deb, so we'll go in the morning. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I probably need to get away by four-ish in the afternoon. Oh, I, I don't yeah. know what time it's going to finish. I think yeah. till Frank. It's, 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 it's as far, I think. Four. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't have to stop till yeah. four. Yeah. No, no. Okay. So, so yeah. it's in like, it's in like, the public, when it's the Christmas light yeah. switch on, for example, there's just all members of the public. Yeah. They're basically business people. Yeah. If, you know, I think we were, we were next to um, our local MP last, last and, 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 and I noticed the Lord Mayor, Councillor Jerry Barker, is opening the event. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, um, and D, the email from Bradford Council over the future of um, Scarpag. Um, <laughs> Um, which I know Howard used to go to, right. David used to know very well. Well, he used to be the area committee. Any comments on the proposal? I, I think um, I unfortunately have not managed to go the last two or three meetings, but I think it has sadly run its course because we used to get 25, 30 people there mm -hmm. and it's really down and down. And well, I used to go. <laughs> you know, I think it's uh, run its course. It was an ideal. Forum for communities, uh, identified communities like uh, Micklethwaite Village yes, Society, yeah. Gilstead, whoever, Town and Parish Council, to actually send a nominated member yeah. to the area committee meetings and actually participate within that yeah. by being able to ask questions, make comments. Um, it may be that it has run its course, but I think it is important that some dialogue within that um, mm. uh, process yeah. is that, you know, it's still required to get that yeah. making decisions at Shipley, yeah. they actually still need to ensure that somewhere along the line, local communities and are involved in that and process. And, 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 did the area committee not also have a provision where groups could either ask questions or something yeah, like yes, that? Yes, and yes. that presumably will still stay, won't it? Or it should stay. Is that the area committee? Yes, yes, yes. yes. I think. Because yeah. I think that, I mean, you whether or not people use I think it's can, important. Can, can I just clarify that? So, I, I, I'm a community association for 20 years. Uh, there was one of these meetings where you have to, you have, to have written, you have to put a written right. question. So there, there was two ways to do it. You could either submit a written question, yeah. which any member of the public can do. Yeah. What I afforded the advisory panel no. people was that they could come and ask questions no. of the officers presenting reports, no. make comments, and actually, on occasions, the information that that local community fed back no. in 
actually change the course of the decision we were making. So I, I, I believe it was an important part of that lump of democracy thing. Yes, I think mean, Times may be moved on. I tell you what David says it was very good. Very can, I, good. can I make a comment about another um, piece of correspondence that came, I think, the day after this was published? Well, it's not strictly on the agenda, but I'll, I'll well, allow you to well, do so. Oh, it's, 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 it's a piece of comments. Well, well, first of all, should we just, right. let's do the scape the scar a bit first, so we, so we don't... Oh, sorry, I thought we finished that. Sorry, um, so, so, are we going to say that, what, what are we going to say to them in terms of... Well, we've had it's, we've had it's got this stage, but, um, you know, we'll go along with the majority of the... I think we don't need reminding yeah, no, that, right. that interaction with yeah. particular local community groups, which are not parish or town councils, yeah. Yeah. still needs to be maintained in some form or other, yeah. else there's going to be a local um, democracy yeah. deficit. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so um, if, if the clerk can feed back some comments. Just Mark. going to pick it up on uh, David's point there. It, it seems like it's wanted, but it doesn't seem like it's getting, it's its, getting its name out there to, to well, catch some So it's changed. I, I, I think in everybody in the room, you know, we had that flu thing a couple of years ago, didn't we? And a lot <laughs> of... A lot of organisations have collapsed totally, yeah. have been decimated in volunteers, yeah. and there just doesn't seem to be an appetite for folk coming out of the woodwork and actually getting back as involved as they yeah. used to be. Yeah. How, how you address that is, I think, way above my pay grade. Pulse. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I think organisation, you know, Michelle was saying, you know, the, the Chamber of Trade, they used to have 30 odd members go every meeting, and now that are three or four. You look at your village societies struggling to maintain yeah. themselves, yeah. cricket club, you name it. It's, it's that volunteer deficit again, isn't it? And it's how do you try and get people back into that thing of giving a little bit back to your own community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I say, that's most likely what my pay right? yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and I think it's probably fair to say that the volunteers who do volunteer don't necessarily want to go and sit at a ca uh, Bradford Council committee meeting. Um, they want to be actually using their time to do, yeah. do useful things. Mm. So, so we, we will do that. Right, John, what are you going to do? I was just going to um, say that there were correspondents from somebody at Longwood Avenue, which is by Billy Grammar School, about the parking. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to um, advise you that a number of years ago, I went to visit Bradford Royal Infirmary and I parked up a side street, and it were an access only. And when I came out, I had a cat parking ticket. I have always known from that day what a access only street was and I've never parked on it since. So my suggestion would be, Al, that the man all those parking tickets on them up those streets and that uh, and that might just uh, slow them down it, it, this is it's, this it's is wrong. Yeah, it's wrong when you get yeah. in your own drive it's wrong. This is a long running issue yeah. which has been raised off and on um, with the council and with the police for all the time I can remember. Yes, yeah, yeah. The residents of Longwood are absolutely correct, yes, but, yeah. but it's all connected with parking outside um, Bingley Grammar yeah, School yeah. when um, drop off and pick up things. That in itself is a huge issue which from time to time council wardens and the police do swoops and do tickets and this that and the other but of course, they can't be there all the time. And then when they move away, and, uh, and you follow it after a day or two, things get back to the way it was before. Yeah. So it is a huge issue. And I think that um, we, um, I think in the correspondence we have between the council, I think it will have to be raised once again with the ward partnership 
um, and, and the police and we'll have to make the representation. Quite what the answer is, I don't know, because no. you're right, people can have tickets, but um, you know, the people need to be there to give them tickets. One interesting point is on the enforcement. Now we can enforce resident only permits at Radford, we can enforce double yellow lines, we can do you for not putting a pound in your slot out there. Bradford was looking at taking additional highways enforcement functions on and maybe the question we need to ask is is access only one of those functions I see what you're saying. and if so what is Bradford Council's plan to implement shall we say a more rigorous uh, regime particularly in problematic areas now Longwood might be problematic, but I'm sure there's lots of other places in Bradford District which are equally, if not worse. Is what you mean is whether it is a Bradford Council parking or whether it's a police thing? Yeah, yeah. Bradford are trying to take on some additional yeah. highways enforcement functions. Right. Uh, I, I think something like yellow boxes might be one of them. Yeah. But obviously I'm out of the loop now, yeah. but I think we need to ask that question. Is access only one of those things they're taking yeah. on? Yeah. If so, when and yeah. what yeah. is your plan to address, obviously a long-standing local issue? Yeah. Because unfortunately, access only currently I think it's a police thing, no, and they're yeah. not over keen on know, enforcing that. it, particularly when police lady or whatever at uh, the time of the school uh, didn't seem to think it was an issue. No. Okay. Well, why would, why would the council want to take that on? It's just, it's just like, well, because it's a poison shell, isn't it? That's Bradford Council. Yeah, yeah, but you know, it's a po poison shell. It's taking it out of a, a legal system into a, into a, an, a, a non-legal or a... Well, it's still having it's forces. It's 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 how, how, how is enforcement is... Uh, uh, is uh, a legal backed thing. So it's it's just the enforcing agency is not the police, it's a local authority. Councillor Beckwith. I don't know, I'm quite cotton on to most of that. But what I do feel is what part of what John has said is that uh, can't we put it in a note talking about the parking problems? Send in a note to who, Robert? It should be ship the area part of the advisory group, surely. No. no. It, it needs to go to highways enforcement. I think the best way is still the war partnership, which uh, yeah. uh, the Council of Goodall, uh, uh, Council yeah. of Winnow yeah. mentioned. Yeah. In theory, there is perhaps a council there. In theory, yeah. there is the police yeah. there, there's the ward officers, and that's the start so, yeah. pressure, and maybe ask that question. Yeah. That yeah. Okay, thank you, John, for that. <laughs> Moving on, 2324 124. Any promotional items that the Town Council wishes to publicise um, this meeting? Next year's play of the party. Yeah, Christmas. 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 Yes, Christmas. Christmas. Park and the Christmas. Um, the local Christmas. thing. Potential, potential of a grant should they wish. Yeah. 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 Neighbourhood plan, perhaps. No, 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 no. I think we'll talk about the neighbourhood plan a bit. I've seen something else this week, I think it's better. Okay, um, so we will do that. Um, date of the next meeting. To agree the date, um, 31st of October, 6.30 at Cottingley Town Hall. And to agree the dates for full council meetings in November, December and January, um, suggested no dates, no full council meeting in November, but a subsequent meeting to be held on Tuesday the 5th of December and the 9th of January. And we, we have to do that because it, the budget process becomes um, quite pressing and we need to have various meetings and have to meet various dates. So I think that makes... Oh, I've got a little question for us. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I know we're allowed to dot around and go to different communities. Uh, 
Do we not have a chance to use the um, centre where we used to have the office in Cotton Lane? Cornstone. 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 That's oh, it. Yeah. Which is a bit more of a convivial building. Yeah, yeah. they're busy on Tuesday. Yes, yes and that's just what yeah. I'm going to say. The problem we're getting uh, is we, we, we sort of fixed to a Tuesday night and we, we, we used to use various, uh, we used to use cross flats, um, church, uh, a church of cross flats, uh, the old, well, I'd say old people, uh, the community centre at the back of uh, the fish shop at cross flats. Uh, I think it's just available, David. I can answer that one, James, John, David, John. Um, in 1983, we're having a meeting, meeting on a Tuesday night. We could use a corner store, but because there's nothing else going on Tuesday night, it would cost us 90 quid because I had a discussion with him and Nick and I said, I'm going to ask the question what it would really cost us. Yeah. And it, cost, it would cost us 90 quid if we had it on a Tuesday night. Yeah. And we only pay about half of that, don't we? Mm -hmm. okay. I thought we were busy on Tuesday, that's fine. No, I mean, that's Funnily enough, I did, I've forgotten about this. Uh, I have recently asked what availability there was for the, but I think I went to be talking the main, main hall. Right. I mean, that's massive, I don't know that bit. That would be more than 90 quid, I think. Right. Um, but she said that they're often, often, it were often available on the children. Yeah. Well, well for, for next year's meetings, when we go to yeah. Cottingley, we should at least consider. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's what it was. It's quid, yeah. Well, yeah, which we don't. <laughs> which is, uh, I understand what you're saying, David. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I think it's important we do have some meetings in Cottingley yeah. as well. Yeah. So. We need somebody to sponsor the meetings, David, have you think? Right, um, so can we agree to the proposal that um, there's no full meeting in November and there are meetings on the 5th of December and the 9th of January? So I'll propose those. Yeah. Yeah. Can we agree to those? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then that's carried. Um, right, now uh, exclusion of the press from the public. Um, to resolve that members of the press and public may be excluded from any items under the provisions of the public bodies, admissions to Meetings Act 1960 during considerations of items of a confidential Before. nature. Okay, and all in favour? All in favour? Yeah. 